Hey gang, what's going on? Kevin Goatee, Gutting the Sacred Cow, how's it going? Look, first and foremost, thanks again for listening. Really appreciate all of your kind words. Cannot thank you enough. I'm going to start off today's episode by saying this. Some of our guests have had some pretty low energy, but that's just their style. Cool, no big deal. Some of our guests, like today's guest, Gino Bisconti, you may have heard of him, In Hot Water on Compound Media, and of course, Comics Watching Comics Seasons 5 and 7, he shot out of a goddamn cannon. Gino Bisconti has decided to come on and do Uncut Gems. Mmm. A lot of people loved it, a lot of people did not. But we're going to hear Gino's take on that. Before we get to it, don't forget, guttingthesacredcow.com. I'm holding up one of our pretty kick-ass t-shirts you see here. Guttingthesacredcow.com has shirts, hoodies, hats, mugs, totes. You name it, we have it. Even have baby onesies, for the love of Christ. Guttingthesacredcow.com also has blogs every single day, Monday through Friday, different news stories. Get on that. Subscribe to the newsletter so that way you don't miss anything. Thank you yet again for all those five-star ratings and two-sentence reviews. If you have not yet done so, please, it does help us. Can't thank you enough. If you want to advertise, guttingthesacredcow at gmail.com. Much appreciated. And thank you so much yet again for tuning in to us. It means the world to us. I don't know why I paused right there for that. That's enough. Enjoy the episode. Gather round. Want to take a dinghy, Frank? No thanks. I took care of that at the press conference. Kevin Israel, name that film. What? I, I, you mumbled at the beginning. Was it want to take a dinghy? It says, Frank, do you want to go take a dinghy? No thanks. I took care of that at the press conference. Was that a naked gun? It was. Finally, yeah. he gets one right. <laughs> Couldn't but see that any easier. Fucking, it's a classic film. Hey, everyone, gutting the sacred cow. We're back. And let me just tell you, we're enjoying a ton. We can't thank you, honest to God, enough. Your loyalty to the show and just watching us and sharing with us. It's so great. We're hoping you've enjoyed such episodes like what, Kevin Israel? Like Michael Price doing Batman Returns or, or, uh, or Bill McCuddy doing Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Those are great. But don't forget, always leave, if you can, five-star rating, two cents of review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, and we appreciate that. But we're, can, we're going right down. By the way, Kevin, how are you today? I didn't say properly to say hello to you. Oh, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm Excellent. We are, good. we are now continuing down our favorite network, the, the network that shows us nothing but love, to one of our old stalwart friends, and that is none other than Gino Bisconti of In Hot Water hey, on the Compound Media Network, also of Comics Watching Comics Seasons 5 and 8, uh, seven, five, and seven, which I fucking love. Two of my favorite episodes. Gino, buddy, it's been a minute. How are you, pal? Uh, doing great. Living the dreams. Jesus and, that, and that could be a more perfect segue to Gino's selection of tonight's film. And that's could Uncut be. Gems. <laughs> the 2 0 fastball. I'm not going to miss that one. No, that's a beaut. That's a beaut. Gino Bisconti has selected the recent critics' darling Uncut Gems, a 2019 budget of 19 million bucks, a haul of only $50 million because it got put to Netflix super fast. IMDB score, as we know, is a one through 10 with decimal points. Gino, I'll give you first crack on the old one to 10 with decimal points. What did Uncut Gem score on IMDB? IMDB, that seems like one of those friggin' media driven popular ones. I'm gonna say 8.3, John Seven, Jefferson. 8.3, I'll look at the jersey references, 8.9. No, sir. It is an offensive lineman. I cannot think of seven point four. Wow! Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, that seems that that's that, that seems generous considering what I fucking saw. Well, one and a half times. <laughs> Feel the other half. Critics Rotten Tomatoes is a one through one hundred percentage point. Kevin Israel, why don't you lead off? Critics score ninety one. Ninety one. Gino Visconti. 
The critics, see, okay, Rotten Tomatoes, let me preface with this, okay? Now, we've all seen fucking Hannah Gadsby, that fucking dude, that piece of fucking shit, that thing that's the problem with fucking comedy. And on fucking Rotten Tomatoes, you know what the critics gave her? Like 98%. You know what the fans gave her? 3% because she sucks a giant dick. I didn't mean to bring up your prom, Kevin. But that said, this I didn't is know you were going to be doing your set tonight, Gina. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing and my no set. One's right. And no one's laughing like his set, too, <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, there you go. They, well, you know, it's hard to hear people laugh on Zoom and outdoors because fucking the world sucks a dick. Didn't mean to bring up your prom twice, Kevin. Commitment. Listen. <laughs> I'm going to say since they kiss ass on fucking Rotten Tomatoes, I'm going to say the critics 9.4. They love Out of 10, right? Nine, no, this is a 1 through 100. This is a percentage. Okay, then I'm going to say 94. 94. Kevin and Israel wins both showcases, 92. I was right there. I went over. Yeah, it was what did, well. Wait, what did Kevin say? He said 93, right? Or did you yeah. one? 91. Yeah. No, oh, showcases. even better. You were with him. And remember the Gino over. rule of comedy. When a joke bombs, say it again. Audience <laughs> score. Gino Bisconti, I'll let you go first. What did the audience give Uncut Gem? 67. Kevin Israel. 84. 52. Yeah, wow. see? Yeah, see that? Because that's what goes on. That's what goes because it was so anxiety ridden. It was terrible. Shot by a fucking epile epileptic. I'm glad Gino switched to decaf and not and relaxes me. Booted up some heroin before doing this episode. That cigar has crack in it. <laughs> it does. You like to get wet? Quotes. Giggity, giggity. Quotes in this film, Kevin Israel, you lead off. Quotes, anything jump out at you that you? Uh, that you uh, yeah, I, I picked out. I think one or two. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, Jews and colon cancer. What is that? I thought we were the chosen people. And uh, and I think you are the most annoying person I've ever met. I hate being with you. I hate looking at you. And if I had my way, I would never see you again. I missed you too. Do the quote now. Do the quote. <laughs> I don't have, this film is very unquotable. The only thing I caught was, I disagree, when he's talking to Frances about putting the bed in the way he just yeah. kind of paused. That's oh, it. yeah. With that dumb grin on his face, I disagree. It's the dumbest, oh, we'll talk about that. Okay. Gina Bisconti, any other, any quotes jump out at you? No, 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 no quotes. No quotes when he's like, I win, and they shoot him through the head. That, that quote jumped out at me. That quote, John, I, there was nothing, there were no memorable quotes in this line, in this movie, because everyone fucking talked over everyone in the movie to add to the randomness of it. The dialogue was like fucking, it was like, uh, what's that fucking show with the other Jew, Curb Your Enthusiasm, where, where they just fucking flipped all the scripts on top of each other. It's such a oh. piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you more, Israel. I missed you more, I did. It's not possible. <laughs> I really did. Five fun facts. This Five film, the seventh most F-bombs dropped Five in film facts. history. Really? Yeah. Do you know the other six? Uh, Wolf of I can... Wall Street's one of them, I know that. Wolf of Wall Street, obviously, uh, you know what it, that had the most last I heard was that uh, Team America, the, the, the fucking one oh, with the yeah. puppets. <laughs> And uh, what was the one it beat? I can't even fucking remember. It had to be a Tarantino movie. I feel yeah. like that's yeah, probably Django, Tarantino. Django and Shane probably would be a good I know that uh, Django and Shane had the most N bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. And or it was Gino, the calls, bomb yeah. <laughs> Gino calls that fucking foreplay. It's fantastic. <laughs> if you edit it for N bombs, it's a, it's a fucking short. It really a is. service <laughs> announcement for Gino. It's a Pixar <laughs> film. I don't know if you know this. Uh, N bombs, when I bet on the M NBA, it's called investing. Did you know that? Jesus Christ. He's trying his new material on us, Kevin. You call that to a T. <laughs> yeah. I, <know. laughs> I thought he said I was doing my own material. Make up your mind, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, want to take a stab on what two NBA players were considered before Garnett? One current, one former? Had to be LeBron. No. Ooh, that, I, I, I was going to say, for some reason, I was going to say Shaq or Barkley. Um, Just because I... Amari Stoudemire and oh, your own favorite, Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. Yeah. I uh, feel like he's not a big enough name. Yeah. And he wasn't even in the 2012 fucking game. He was still in fucking who knows where. He was still playing fucking soccer in Cambodia. Sandler, number three, told the Safdie brothers no twice. Who do they go to next to play in the role but change their minds because they felt his age would be an issue? I know this one. I got this. Harvey Keitel. 
<laughs> I don't know why that just jumped out of me. I liked Harvey Keitel. No, no. Who? Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill? Yeah. Wait. You know what? You... After after seeing him in Wolf of Wall Street, I could see it. He would have been kind of the same character. Right. Yeah. I. You know what? Okay. I agree with that, but it's just he's he's. And fucking Sandler got a little puffy for it. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you that. You're right. Okay. I don't like it. When creating the character of Howard, Josh and Benny Safdie said they were heavily influenced by Jewish humor and actors from the 20th century, wanting to encompass Howard with more, well, sorry, wanting Howard to encompass Jewish stereotypes, proudly treat them as a, quote, superpower. Worst superpower ever. Let's see how long that will last in a battle against Thanos, Magneto, or Lex Luthor. Or Hitler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, a, a good superpower for Jews would be to withstand heat, don't you think? I know you want to send me to that camp, but apparently you haven't heard about my Jewish superpower. <laughs> I'm waiting for Gino to insert stereotypes now. <laughs> no, I, I thought it was great. Like, may, maybe they have gills so they can breathe in gas. I mean, that'd be a great fucking superpower for Jews, right? Huh? Huh? Or here's a superpower: give them souls. Never mind. Never oh, mind. Jesus now I'm stressed. Christ. What? What? Our souls are stored in our horns, Gino. You could <laughs> know that. Number five: the Safty brothers did a film in 2017 called Good Times. John Amos plays Sandler's neighbor in the apartment, who also starred in the TV show Good Times. Good Times, yeah. And John Amos, fun fact, was supposed to play Chubbs in Happy Gilmore. And John, said, Amos, John Amos was the keynote speaker at my sister's college graduation in 1989. And it was, this, and it was an all, it was 99% white college and he got up to speak and you saw all the people just kind of looking around confused. So your sister went to Monmouth County College, we got it. <laughs> oh yeah, and John Amos had, had the bit part in the movie, right? He was like, yeah. he played his neighbor. Yeah, exactly. But he was John Amos. He played John Amos, that's right. And he was also in Die Hard 2. Piece of shit Die Hard 2, I hated that one. What was wrong with that? What, it, if you had to rank the Die Hards in order, it would go Die Hard 1, right. Die Hard 3, Die right. Hard 2, then I, Die Hard 4. And the rest are terrible. Oh I like, my God, that last one you had to watch just so you could say you watched all the Die Hards, right? I liked Live Free or Die Hard more than I liked Die Hard 2. That was the fourth one where they're in D.C. with the hackers. I love Timothy Olfey yeah, is I, fucking I, amazing. Yeah, that, but that was, that, it was okay, but wasn't it rated PG-13? It was, I know. Yeah. Kiss of Death. Is that I bad? Know. I mean, it, it took away from... When your whole franchise is based on saying yippee ki motherfucker, and then you make the movie PG-13 so he can't even say that? Yeah, he, he did. Really no, no, he did say it in the very end. Remember, he... Oh, because you can say it once. Yeah, you get yeah. one fuck. One, that's, that's, right. the, that's the fuck that they say. Is that, that really? Yeah. Sounds like me this pandemic. <laughs> you get one fuck? That was pretty... You saved funny. up all your money, huh, Gina? <laughs> we had a guy on the show today who fucking lost his virginity. He paid some hooker 700 bucks during the pandemic. That doesn't seemed like a fucking prudent venture at all Wait, he garrett came back on the show today mm -hmm. he was back 700 dollars lighter Oof. figured you'd get the corona discount at least all right before we get to that don't forget take a pair take a pic with your gutting the sacred cow merch and we'll feature you on our social media but i don't think we can keep this cage animal cage any longer this time you have gutting the sacred cow merch really we do, we do. <laughs> I'm not, is it a show i'll wear one on the show i didn't i'm a bad friend you really the, do yes. what do you have go to gutting the cow.com we have coffee mugs we have shirts hats tote bags whatever i'm gonna get fuck. a mug for the show because you know do. all the guys i would not fucking will look at my face i'm very i'm a little 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 verklempt a little embarrassed i didn't i gotta support my boys oh what else? What else do you have? Like a frisbee? Do you have a gutting the sacred cow? Like veal? What do you, What do you got there? What do you veal? Got? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, for the it's like cow, a very scrawny what a cow. Stretch. What else you got? Like a creamer? We've got, got a, a we we've got a syringe for all those heroin addicts over there. The watch yeah, Gino's the, the show. Sh the shooting gallery. It's fantastic. <laughs> But we can't keep Gino Visconti. He's champing at the bit, not chomping. You literate fucks, champing at the champing bit. Champing at the bit. And let's get out ready to get Gino his chance to gut, gut the sacred, sacred cow. First of all, let me say this about the movie. I only watched it one and a half times. I mean, do people do this a lot? They come on, but don't get me wrong. I watched, I watched a couple fucking uh, 
you know, fucking synopsis. Do people do this a lot? They, they, they got movies that they, they fucking have watched multiple times, but they hate? Like, I'm yeah. just curious. Some, really? Some, some, some do. Some people just I, have such a hard on for things and want to watch it. I feel like this is Adam Sandler's, Sandler's comeuppance to me. I don't say comeuppance because I had to watch this fucking movie again. Okay, one, fucking, it had a strike against it because everyone was jamming it down my throat. They're like, oh my God, Gene, you have to see Uncut Gems. You'll fucking love it. You gamble. It's a movie about gambling. You'll fucking love it because a gambler, no, a gambler wouldn't love this movie because everyone who didn't like this movie, which is 54% of fucking, uh, excuse me, it was the opposite, 46% of fucking regular America, and I'm surprised not higher, they said, oh, it just gave me anxiety. Yeah. Because of the way it was shot. Because there's fucking, it's annoying. The fucking camera angles suck. People talk over each other. And if I wanted to feel anxiety, you know what I would do, Kevin? I would gamble myself. I wouldn't watch a shitty fucking movie about fucking gambling, which is so fucking unrealistic. I want to reach through the fucking camera and choke him. Let me tell you, Kevin, you, you've you been known to put in a wager, right? Sure Putting a wager, right? You ever put in a... You ever put in a, a five-figure, um, um, if you had a, a six-way parlay for five figures? How fucking unrealistic is that? No, you know what makes it unrealistic? His six-way parlay, he hits it. He hits mm -hmm. it, which is insane. And not only is it insane, because you're like, okay, well, now, now I'm like, all right, you, you don't think he's going to hit it because as a gambler, if it's a gambling movie, this he loses the bet, and then fucking hijinks ensue. No, he wins. I'm like, all right, well, I guess that settles that. No. Because they find another way to annoy you. And I haven't even gotten to the fucking gem, which is being kept from him. Oh, the movie's like a basketball game. Did anyone hear that? Did you hear that fucking metaphor? Not no. Said, no, first time. Uh, dude, uh, our good friend Dave Landau, who fucking was raving about this podcast and fucking told me fucking it was a good movie. And I said, go back to fucking Detroit, you cousin fucking hick. Said, oh, you got to fucking realize it's like a basketball game. Think about it. If you see the movie, uh, the uncat, like if you ever watch basketball or if you know the, the lingo, uh, it's called a rock. Fucking run the rock. So that fucking uncat gem is the rock. And the tip off is when the fucking thing's delivered in the fish and fucking, you know who wins the tip off? Garnett does because he gets the ball. And I don't know if you know this about Garnett, but he's a ball hog. So he doesn't give him the fucking rock back. And he fucking makes him go all the way to Philly. And here's the thing that got so annoying because you, mm -hmm. oh, he's gone to Philly to get the fucking gem. And you know, you know he's not going to get the gem. You know he's not going to. And the only thing that would have been more annoying than if he didn't get the gem would be if he did. Because it's like, all right, well, why didn't he just fucking drive the gem back? You knew he was lying. But that's what it is. It's like a fucking basketball game. And, and that's what people love to do. They love to take a shitty movie that people don't like and try and impress you and say, wow, you missed the point. Let me make myself feel so much smarter than you because I saw something in the movie you didn't. You didn't see how the gem was one thing to fucking uh, Adam Sandler because Adam Sandler is materialistic and only worried about money. Yet when Kevin Garnett looked through it, he saw the fucking, you know, the trials and tribulations of it. No one fucking cares. Is it a movie about gambling? Then you don't hit a five-figure, six-way parlay. And when you do... Kevin, did you see what happened when he hit it? He didn't yes, get the I, money. Why? Yeah. Because the guy he owed money to followed him to the bookie and said, don't put that bet in. Kevin, I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to ask you again. As a gambler, if fucking someone gave a bookie fucking five fucking figures on a six-way parlay and someone came in and said he owes me that money, give it to me, would he give him that money, Kevin? No. 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 Not a fucking chance in hell. He'd say, get the... But in this movie, as if you're not fucking annoyed enough at how fucking bullshitty it is and how dis annoyed you are other people like, you love gambling, you love this movie. No, because it was made by someone who never gambles. Because if I want to fucking get anxiety, you know what I'll fucking do? I'll bet fucking money on the Clippers to fucking win by three and have LeBron get his own fucking rebound because the Lakers don't give a fuck about my money. But no. I need to watch Uncut Gems because it's so fucking realistic. And then, and then as if that's not enough, if, as if that's not enough after you're fucking, you get past. You get past the fucking fact that he put in this huge stupid bet and he somehow won. And yet in the most ridiculous way, he didn't get that money. What does he do? It, what does he do later? He puts in a six figure, yeah. six way parlay. And you, you know what the odds of hitting a six way parlay are? Well, I have, uh, I have, I have it written down if you care. Yeah, the, I do. The, the answer is... Wait, before you do, let me tell you. In this movie, it's 
it's a 100% <laughs> chance of hitting a six-way parlay because he put in two, and how many did he hit? Two. Two. Okay, tell me now, – now, I love that you did this. What are the odds of hitting a six-way parlay? The same chance as Jesse Eisenberg of raping Chuck Liddell while tonguing Margot Robbie's asshole. Do you understand? Yeah. This movie is I do. Realistic. I understand very well. This, this, do you understand, like, how I'm watching this movie, <laughs> losing my fucking marbles? Yeah. I, I was probably the only guy and, – and then, and then, the biggest – fucking uh artsy cop out no happy ending he wins and they shoot him in the fucking head now i'm gonna ask you another fucking question kevin goatee yeah. let's say that i locked you in a fucking two-way door okay locked you in with your two goons and your boss okay and i made you sit and watch and told you told you i just put 175 grand on a fucking six-way parlay and i was about to win fucking tens of millions of dollars now and you know the girl is bringing me the money because I'm going to give you the money I owe you. Would you shoot me and rob my fucking jewelry store? Or would you wait till that girl came back and at the worst shoot her and take all the money? I'm just asking you. I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. So I need you guys to do me a fucking favor and tell me one thing about the only thing that would have made this movie more realistic is if he had a twin fucking sister. A twin sister named Uncut Gemnus like he does in every other fucking movie. Tell me one thing about this movie that was, oh, well, it was, it was anxiety-ridden. Again, you don't need a movie. I don't watch a movie to feel fucking anxious. I need you to tell, well, you know, because Adam Sandler's evolving. Why? Why? Because you wanted to make Pete Davidson the next Adam Sandler? No, let Pete Davidson be Pete Davidson. There's a reason no one's gutting his fucking movie because it was fucking good. But this movie was a fucking abortion. And I love abortion as much as the next guy. It's stupid. It's stupid. Thoughts? Boy, do we have some. Kev, you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first. Please do. Mine, uh, mine, mine will definitely be shorter than yours. And uh, I think it'll be a nice break from that manic episode. Uh, no, I, I, like, I like how Gina snuck in a Jack and Jill subtle reference to a, a Sanford film. His movies are terrible. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the depth of his movies. It's like, it's like you know what? You get a Jack and Jill. They're twins, but they're both out of Sandler. Ugh. So, and they're Jewish, uh, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, be I very reluctantly saw this movie. Uh, my wife is a... Uh, is a, an award uh, nutcase. So when a movie gets awards, she says we have to see it. it took oh. me months and months and months to finally see it. I really had no idea what the movie was about. And halfway through the movie, I kept thinking, I still have no idea what this movie is about. <laughs> I don't get what's happening. Right. Uh, I hate to have to agree with Gino. The movie, was, the movie was filmed so erratically that I didn't even understand. I, I, actually, my wife had to tell me that the girl he was fucking was the girl from the store, because you could they never trained on anyone long enough for you to yeah. for you to assimilate a face into your brain and go, oh, that's the same person that they just showed. They did the show no 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 they did show long as he was walking to his office she'd stare him down they would, they would focus on her staring him down as he walked in. I felt like the camera was still because it was supposed to be him and it was still like a shaky shot. It, it, Gino's right. The movie, the movie can was designed. I, can I get that on a sound clip? No, no, that's that you're literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, I love that. I love the it. Movie, the movie was designed to make you feel the, the, the anxiety that he was going through. The, the highlight of this, I thought, was Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler did a great job being this character, becoming this character, this hateable, loathsome, obnoxious character that you, that everybody. I'm going to interrupt you right there and say, I have to admit, I have to admit, when I was watching it the second time, and I knew, like, when I was watching it the first time, he gets so aggravated, at least I did. I, I'm just going to underscore what you're saying. I'm like, he's really acting really well. I yeah. mean, this movie, I want to show, but, but it, I, I noticed it the second time, like, he's really acting really well. Sorry to interrupt. I will give you that. No, no, no. no. But this, as far as a plot and a story goes, this movie was written terribly. I didn't, I, there were so many different little storylines that they start and then just abandon. The whole thing about his wife and him getting divorced, you felt like that was going to be like a big point of something, and then it never came to anything. The son, who he seemed to be influencing and was going to go the way of his father because his father was so fucked up and his son thought his father was cool, that never went anywhere. Yeah. He had this relationship with the girl, then they didn't, then they were back, and suddenly she was willing to do all this shit for him. 
it just it just felt like they kept on saying, yeah, now this and now this and the whole thing with Kevin Garnett, which by the way, Garnett is a rock. Get it? Um, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that all that also just sort of it comes out of nowhere. You, I I also I also couldn't believe Gino. If we're talking about stuff you don't believe, I don't believe that a that a get a, a basketball star, especially of the level of Kevin Garnett, is going to come in this place and be like, I have to have this rock and yeah. just take it and risk possible legal implications and all the shit that could come along with that. That just seemed really really ridiculous. I f- I felt like there was a better way they could have got him to have the rock than just being like, I need to take it. Oh, and the second run. the second he gets the the rock, he takes the ring for collateral, he fucking sells the ring, he can't get the ring. It's it's like it should have been called whatever annoys you the most because anything, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like nothing and and don't get me wrong. I mean, that's what a movie is. It's it's like when something goes wrong, but nothing. No, you said it. It's like they just started, oh, this is going to go somewhere and it didn't. It's like, no. Did that fucking right. make you uneasy? But, right. Yeah, but uh, what is the plot? Right, and then the, uh, the the brother-in-law, who I guess was the was the other guy he owed money to, and those two random gangsters who I thought worked for the brother-in-law, but then it turned out they were the actual badasses. There was no expansion on who they were, why they were there, what the whole relationship was. You you never got anything outside of the fact that Adam Sandler was a disaster, which they made that point very clear. And now let me ask you this: Was he was sorry? To, and was he supposed to ha, be? Was he supposed to be a lovable, redeemable? Was was this supposed to redeem him in some way? Were you supposed to well, find well, moments so where you bonded with him? And, and I didn't. Gino, got it. If you had any faith in me, I would have gotten to that point. I apologize. Um, I do. I uh, the the end of the movie. I thought he was going to win the money. I thought it was going to be a quasi happy ending and it was going to show that this fucking miserable fuck up for all the stupid shit he did, he fucking pulled it out. Crazy as it happened, it all ended up working out for him. And the moral is no matter how big of a piece of shit you are, just sometimes life lets you win one. And when they shot him, I was like, it's just another one of those. Yeah. It's just another one of those. People are shit, and they do shitty things, and shit happens to them. Yeah. And we've seen it, and I feel like every movie being made today is just hammering home the point that people are assholes. And my, my favorite example of this is the show The Walking Dead. Never show The Walking it. Dead, it was, it was a great show for the first, like, three, four seasons. And nope. then after nope. the fourth... Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> season one, I was out like a fat girl in dodgeball. Yeah, I, I, really, I really liked season one, season two, and season three started to fall off the rails. Season four, it, every season just got to the... Just, the point of every season was, hey, this horrible shit is happening. Look how bad it's making people be. And each yeah. season, those people that they ran into were just worse. And I feel like this movie was just like, look, this person's bad, but this person's really bad. And this mm-hmm. person's shitty. And by the way, they're going to kill him at the end. Like, I get it. I get that people are shit. We're seeing it today. We have Gino Bisconti on our show. Hi. Hey, it's everybody. It's fucking hey, a kids. disaster out there. Stay in school, kids. <laughs> but we don't, they don't have to hammer it home. This movie would have been somewhat better to me if he actually pulled it out in the end. And there was some kind of... But... Some, some something redeeming about it but, but i'll it take it a step. and it just ended and i remember I, it ended and i was like it's such an empty feeling like i watched this whole thing i i went through this whole emotional process i feel all fucking anxious and now he's dead like i didn't even get anything out of it but it's do you like understand? a hand job and then she leaves right when you go i'm gonna come <laughs> you know what that's like gino i'm the story of my life he, no he gives the hand jobs before you can come that's what gino <laughs> does i say i'm gonna leave but then i finish and surprise him um <laughs> But th- th- this is the thing that, that I think they're hitting you over the head with, and it annoys me more. If he had won and didn't die, and, and what happened, what I said would have happened, d- didn't happen, and you go without, he would have just taken that money and, and gambled it, it again. Yep. It would be, and I, well, or done, actually, I, I want to take it back. I don't even know what he would have done, but he would have done something new and annoying. He, he would Yeah, that would have been called White Men Can't Jump. We've seen that too. <laughs> yeah. Like, we've seen all that. But anyway, for me, the movie was the movie. Adam Sandler was carried the movie. He, I thought he did a great job creating a character that was very three dimensional. The, the plot and everything was a disaster. Uh, it's it's a four for me that I will never watch again. Yeah. Would you give it, Kevin? What score? Four. Four. All right. I have notes. The beginning of this film made me think I was watching either Nova or Look Who's Talking. Nova. Nova, the show. Remember that show? Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
If this was Geno's colonoscopy, and believe me, he's age appropriate for one, we would find Anthony Lynn's dick puncture wounds as well as a shiv courtesy of Alex Engelbert. Mm, she'll call. <laughs> Kevin Garnett and Mike Francesa did great jobs for their first time. As Mad Dog Russo would say about his old partner, that's a good job there, Mikey. Say something funny. Very well produced. For the sport fans, you know, I wrote that with you. <laughs> this bet firmly stands on the leaderboard of the this doesn't happen moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way, and, and by the way, he asked, he asked uh, he's like, do you do lightning? What is it? Yeah, I don't I, even. Lightning, I'll, I'll, I I know about lightning, but I'll I you. honestly don't know what that is. I did. I did know. He it. said, "Do you do lightning? What? Lightning bats. I'll tell you about it. Okay, okay well, please go on. I'm sorry. So, as I was saying, no one puts a lightning bet in at a thousand dollars a point unless you plan on skipping town or stepping in front of a train tomorrow morning. Yeah. A lightning bet usually is an over under. So let's say it's an NBA game and the total is 180. Okay. If the score is 8179, so 60, 160, so you're 20 over, and it's a thousand dollars a point, you owe twenty thousand plus two vig on the commission. On but the if it goes the other way, you win you twenty. You win twenty thousand. So every point that you're can below, I can I can you edit this in the, to that point so I can yeah. say it's even more yeah. fucking ludicrous? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had when I was in college, I had a buddy of mine ask the bookie. He goes. Do you do lightning backs in the book? He goes, you don't want any fucking part of that since you're in college. My buddy was a degenerate. Yeah. So yeah. No, thank you. You told me what it was. I said, no, That's no. exactly what Francesca said. To, by the way, they, the fucking screenwriter stole the fucking line from your college bookie because that's what Francesca, Francesca said. It's like, you don't want anything to do with lightning. He, says, he, says, he says, quote, you're, you're, he goes, you think that's good? I think you're a fucking moron. He goes, I disagree. That's yeah. the line there. The background score, the background synthesizer music. I thought I was standing in line at the Space Mountain roller coaster. That shit got annoying fast. His girlfriend, let's talk about this. That girl is way too hot for him. Yes. That's no, a, that, like, no one, I'm going to interrupt you because that's another thing. It's like whenever they watch a movie, they make the chick hot, but it's got to be believable. It's got to be the extreme extent of believable that, like, you're like, I, but it's not. It's not. No one is buying that 28-year-old is sending him lingerie pics. Easily the most, one of the most annoying characters in film history. He's like the last, the last person you would get sucked through next on a fucking plane. The most annoying character in film history, though, is Schindler, right? The one that freed all those Jews. He annoyed me. He annoyed me. <laughs> well, you know what's oh. funny about the girlfriend? The whole time I thought it was going to turn out that the girlfriend was in it for his money where she had something on him. Yeah. yeah. There was something else there. Sure. And then when it turned out that she was actually, she really did just care about him, I was like, they've never given me one reason to believe that there's a reason for her to care about him. And it just, it, it didn't make any, it, that is another huge, unbelievable point of that movie. Yeah, there's a backstory to, like, that, that made you want to latch on and believe it. Like, I could see if they, if they gave you an inkling of some backstory, like, you know, like, they, how they fell in love. But no, it's like, this is just an incredibly hot chick, so out of his league, that he fucking throws a smoothie on her, and he, she writes him a note, oh, I hope you find everything you want and happiness, and stop it. And gets his name tattooed on her ass. That's right. Stripping Sandler naked and throwing him in the trunk there was, was a fucking KI hilarious. On one During the dinner scene, I can't believe Kevin Israel, you let this one go. During the <laughs> dinner scene, we were all waiting for, you'd be dead if it wasn't for my son, David. <laughs> <laughs> you just made my fucking night. I love that movie. You don't you'll be, be dead if it wasn't for my, my son, son, David. David. Wait, wait. You I, did I, that I, and you did nothing. I, I, <laughs> I want to do it. I want to do it. Yes, yes. This time without the oops. All right. <laughs> Gino, Gino, I that, thought about you a lot. If I, I, could only, if I could only be a fly on your wall right. while you watch that scene at the family Seder. If I could just be a fly on your wall while you screamed at that TV, I would have paid <laughs> thousands of dollars. You ready for this? And 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna break my fucking you know uh, exterior. I love that scene because, like, I lo that's the most I ever learned about the Jewish Seder dinner. I know I'm like, this is this is nice. That was the one scene where I'm like, this is nice. This is family. This is nice. Gina, why don't you tell us about finding the gold coins at your family's Passovers? <laughs> we have a drawer of Jews' teeth in the uh, dresser. In the <laughs> we don't we don't have that. All right. So, you know, tell me about a bookie story where you had to make a big payment or get roughed up for not paying. Ever have one of those happen? 
No, I have the opposite of that, where this is so funny. Uh, like, my buddy, you can't make this up. I always say in Philly, but it's Wilmington, Delaware. I still use a book in. His name is Tony. Tony in Philly, right? I don't believe that. Yeah. So, so Tony, like, you know, I bet through him. And some people in New York were betting with him, right? And some guy owed him, like, I don't know, not a lot, like, 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 like 10 grand, maybe, not even, whatever. But he owed him a lot of money. And, and, and Tony. Wait, wait, hold on. What? I'm going to interrupt you now. Did you vouch for him? No, no, no. The ah. guys I vouch for are all deadbeat because they went through me. But the funny thing is, and Tony is a pushover like me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but he said, and, and since he knows me, he meant nothing by it, but this is what he said. The guy's like, well, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to get the money to you. And Tony, knowing me, but the guy doesn't know me, literally said to the guy, you know, my buddy Gino lives in Brooklyn. Maybe I'll have him drop by and get the money from you. The guy shit his pants <laughs> and sent him a fucking money order the next day. But he literally meant I'd show him be like, hey, buddy, you got that money? But when you say, my buddy Gino lives in Brooklyn, maybe I'll have him drop by and get the money from you. He's like, we're going to fucking get killed. Could you that would have been the most honest job Gino's had in the past 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine the guy shitting his pants? I show up, hey, buddy, how are you, dude? You got that money? I really hope you do, gee whiz. It's I gotta, like, what yeah, am I going to do? I got one for you. In college, when I did, again, I sucked in college betting. You know, you, you took fucking, you take favorites like a donkey until you learn yeah. fucking favorites every play. I bet, this is probably like around April. I was probably down close to like 800 bucks. Yeah. Which, which college, is, uh, yes. $50,000. I just shit myself for you. Yes. So what did I have to do? I had to sell my books back before finals. I photocopied <laughs> everything I thought was relevant. And kept the papers, so I had to pay the bookie back. I had to sell my books back. I sold. I had to borrow some money for a few friends, like a hundred bucks here and there. But I had to sell the rest for fucking my books back before finals. That's fucking. And this is why Kevin Israel doesn't gamble. (laughs) Well, Kevin Goatee last year is sixty-two percent against the spread. Actually, two years in a row. That's why you should watch fantasy football, Jibber Jabber. And you can always make stats lie. Like this is a. Oh, you can. This is true. If you look at the last ten Super Bowls and take my team total and team pick. Nine out of the last 10. Isn't that great? How about weeks one through 17? That's not important. If you were to take... <laughs> that's the other thing about gambling that's great. Like, like fucking, that's another thing I hate about this movie. Gambling, and, and Bill Burr said it, uh, comedy is when something goes wrong, okay? It's not like I woke up, I went to the store, I bought milk. I No. It's like when... So, and that's why gambling, if you win 16 out of 16 bets, you're boring and it's not... You, you have no stories to tell. It's the way you lose. When we were talking about that fucking... Uh, there was oh, a third- the San Fran under? <laughs> we were laughing. It was like 38. They had 38 in the first half of the first quarter. I go, I had yeah. the under! <laughs> oh, dude, there was a... Thir- yeah, that was a Thursday. And, and the yeah. best part was... Like, uh, I, I, I'm covering, I'm covering, and, and th- there's no way they could lose unless this guy, he just runs out. He, he, he takes a, a ball in the end zone, and, he, and, like, just kneel on it. He runs out, and I look. I'm watching with Kevin Dombrowski. I look, and I'm like, he's going to fumble this ball. He fumbles <laughs> it straight into the air. So, because that's – and that's what you remember. What about the three bets you won before that? Yeah, I won, but, but, but that, that, that's not fun. That's not why you gamble. I mean, you it know, is. Stop but dropping it's... big comedy names like Bill Burr and <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Dombrowski. Dombrowski. <laughs> I can't believe you guys missed on this one. Nothing beats seeing club drama spill in the streets when guys are yelling at girls at the club at 3M. But she did walk away saying, I was inside, you fucking that, hell. That's Remember another that? one. That, that was the moment. That's a club That's a club. That's a club. You're exactly right. Sandler's teeth caps annoyed the shit out of me. I could not stop focusing on those. I'm a very teeth-sensitive person. The bet he places at Mohegan's son is as likely as Gino marching in a Black Lives Matter event on his way to a Joel Osteen fundraiser. The guy, <laughs> this, is, now this is good. The guy who helps Julia hide in his suite looks like Jeffrey Gurian fell asleep in a tanning bed for an hour. <laughs> Besides the two bets, which are mind-bending anal suppository bullshit. Yes, thank you. I did like this film. <laughs> I did like that. Tell, tell us why. What did you and again, me and me and Israel, we give it his acting was really good. It really was good acting. He but, was great. He was great. I liked some of the, listen, and I'll give you credit, Gino. You made me knock this down one point with your argument. I didn't even take into account where he shot him at the very end. And it's like, wait a minute, asshole. You got the girl's going to bring you a fucking whatever it was, 
eight million dollars or whatever it was going to be. One hundred seventy-five thousand on a six-way parlay. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't even do yeah. the fucking logistics. I like seeing, and I don't mind people who are pieces of shit go through life because they're just born fuck ups. That's just in their yeah. genes. It's what, what happens. And I liked him getting shot in the end. Like, no, you know what? Despite him going through this Rocky esque montage of beating this fucking parlay twice, if you want to be technical, you know what? He's still a piece of shit. And he got what he fucking deserved. I had no problem with that ending, despite again what you not with notwithstanding what you had said before. I like it. I'm not loving it. I see why people like it, and I see why people hate it. That's why I give it a six out of ten. Six. Out of t- six out of yeah. Well, that's liking it. Six out of ten. It's more. Listen, it's more than fucking. You know, more than half. So six out of ten. <laughs> that's what I say. Ah, uh, whatever. I think it's. Scored- a- I think it's a terrible movie. I think it's a kind of movie. It's the kind of movie people want to say they saw and want to say, oh, it's it's so incredible because it's different. It's fucking, it's annoying. It's it's annoying. It doesn't go anywhere. And and I'll, I'll say it again. Fucking, it's a movie about gambling that was written by someone that never fucking gambled in their life or they would not fuck, or they'd be embarrassed to fucking put that shit in a movie. It's so funny you say that because we just did, not even two weeks ago, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And in one scene, which drove me nuts, is Judge Reinhold is wearing a baseball jersey tucked into yeah. his jeans to go, no one on that fucking set knows a goddamn thing because you never, ever, ever tuck your fucking jersey in while it, just hanging out. Yeah, did Cuddy do that? Because yeah, it, it, it falls apart in the second fucking that's half. That's what I said. That's exactly oh, yeah. what I said. No, that's what you yeah. said in the thing. He was right. It's like, mm-hmm. but it's so funny in the first half. By the way, oh, oh, this lets me do another joke. Uh, Forrest <laughs> Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker, uh, which, uh, which eye is his lazy eye in that movie? The, the left one. <laughs> I'm glad I signed up for such silliness tonight. You. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Five star, critics, five star reviews. Okay. This, star this reviews. is the year's most exciting film. You can take that to the bank. The blood bank, Senator. No. Yeah. Hard it's to terrible. Kill. Having looked at it closely, I'd say it's overvalued, but not by much. Manic and pulse pounding with a blistering energy. This is one hell of a ride. Uncut, oh, yeah. Uncut Gems is a near masterpiece of filmmaking, both in style and story. Critics, one star reviews. The Safdie Brothers reviews. manages to make me think with that speech, but I cannot empathize with the time trial misfortunes of impertinent protagonist. Full review in Spanish. They, they, they stripped him naked and put him in his trunk. Does that make any sense to you? Have you it's- ever... Like, that's how a bookie gets, we'll show him, we'll strip him naked. And he don't him pays to have that done to him. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's like not a punishment. That's a good Saturday night for him. <laughs> You're like, if you never what, want what, me to pay you. But let's tell you what, let's just talk about it for a hot second. What's more embarrassing, getting your fucking pinky mashing or broken or being thrown in the trunk of your own car naked at your kid's high school play? Well, I'd rather uh, I'd rather fucking the second one happen than have my pinky mashed and broken. Yeah. Like you're yeah, not really I, sending I a want, message. My whole body's a temple. And it should never be destroyed. Yeah. Either way, we're talking about people looking at at something that looks like a mangled fucking digit. Very small one. Talking prepared. about my dick. Yeah. Look, I'll show you. Hold on. <laughs> By the way, thanks for having me on this. I fucking <laughs> I'm I'm thrilled to. I feel like I'm, I'm the last one at the compound to get to do it, but thank you, guys. You were screaming before I got on, like, tell them I want to do the fucking podcast. I was, because I, I t- they're like, we have Kevin Godin coming. I'm like, tell them I want to fucking do his uncut and, and tell them that movie sucked. Plus, I knew you'd bond over it, because you gamble like a like yeah. a normal person, not like yeah. a fucking guy making a movie that's overhyped. That acerbic, abusive, and abrasive script in which everyone is aggressive and annoying can drive a viewer to distraction. A cunning yet hapless clown juggling 15 balls simultaneously. It'll seriously raise your blood pressure. The question is, do you feel the need to do that? What actually ruined this film for me was the bizarre 80s inflected, mostly synthesizer score. Sandler is really, really effective as a Diamond District hustler. That said, the latest writing from directing the Safdie brothers, Benny and Josh, is like having an irate cabbie I, and I rate New York cabbie screaming nonstop in your ear for two plus hours. I say, time to update your stereotypes, buddy. Not true unless you speak Farsi, Arabic, or Hindi. He's right. 
The vivid vulgarity is so repetitive, uh, so repetitive that it ceases to be shocking. The chaotic, the chaotic plot is predictable, and Adam Sandler's character is a totally self-indulgent, indulgent, utterly contemptible scumbag. Spending two hours in his company is sheer agony. Yeah. <laughs> what? And here's the other thing that kept taking me out of it. It's like, how did she ever marry this guy? How did, uh, uh, what's her name? Menzel Edina? Edina, mm -hmm. right? Edina right. Menzel. Like, like I, I get the scene at the Seder dinner when he's like having trouble with the fucking hooker who he should not fucking be with. And he's like, why don't, and she's like, no. And, and that, and that I even got, I'm like, all right, she's been through this ride before. Maybe she fell in love with the crazy lifestyle. Maybe the other one did, but there's no way you put up with the nonstop insanity and, and, and fucking every time they went into that jewelry shop, I'm like, this place is hell. This place is just fucking hell. Mm -hmm. And what they have the fucking, the, the fucking, uh, they had the gremlin, the 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 the, oh, the, the fucking Furby. Cubic, the a uh, Furby, the cubic zirconia Furby. That's that's what they fucking killed him for. Cubic zirconia Furby, rather than whatever a fucking six way parlay pays out on 175k. Stupid movie. I want to see Gina wear that Furby. That'd be great. Oh, Amazon, yeah, Amazon five star reviews. Amazon Uncut five -star Gems is a gritty, no nonsense art house flick. Violent at times. My only complaint was the filthy dialogue. The constant f bombs were unnecessary. The script seems to stereotype its char characters, making them seem uneducated and mentally nimble. Signed, Quentin Tarantino. Really? No, I just made that up. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, ah, what are they fighting on, Gene? Ah. <laughs> Is this what Jews are really like? <laughs> I'm telling you, I though if if you're a Midwesterner and you watch this film and you have any inkling of hatred for Jews, this is not the film. They should have killed them all. Six million wasn't enough. <laughs> Reading all one-star reviews is laughable. They're all basing it on this movie made me feel dirty slash uncomfortable. Obviously well done by the Safdie brothers because that is exactly what this film is supposed to be. That's great editing. Also great acting to the point people also rated one star because, quote, I hate him, Adam, I hated Adam Sandler's character. You don't watch a movie and rate a movie bad because you hated a character, you simpleton. That's good acting. When someone you know and like in other movies plays a role that really changes them the way you see them. That's a fair point. That's just a lot. People a spend lot. too much time writing these fucking things. They need to go out, go jerk off or something. There's a lot of porn out there to watch. There really is. And I've gone through most of them in the lockdown. What's your favorite category? Just gay porn. He's Psych like psychopathic, kind of psychotic girls live in Florida. <laughs> just gay. No, but I do jerk off to porn stars that look like my exes. That's, that's my move. Uh, all Ron Jeremy. A lot of Ron Jeremy. A lot, lot of Ron Jeremy. A lot, lot of Stacey Pressman porno. I get it. No, Audrey Batoni uh, is like Alex. Madison Ivy is like my former one, uh, Tara. And uh, Aletta Ocean is like uh, an even former one, uh, fucking Rita. So there you Audrey go. Audrey Batoni was one of those really hard hard core porn, porn stars that then like decided to get all artsy and weird, and now she just sucks. Really? Yeah, she her I mean, career. I, I mean, I don't know the order. I would just go to, like, the, the, the page and pick, like, one of the same nine videos. Oh, she was one of my favorites. I went deep into her career. <laughs> my man. <laughs> do you remember Do you remember Houston, as in the, the Houston 500? This woman fucked, fuck, or did whatever. Yeah, that was on Stern. Yeah, yeah, she, she was. heard of She that. ended up dating, like, the kid that yeah. she went to the prom with. And then, she quit, and then she quit porn to become a real estate agent. It's like, uh. don't show me that house. Show me that pussy. <laughs> one of my I follow one of my favorite porn stars I follow her on Instagram and she she quit porn and now she got into like fitness and like yoga and all that shit and she posts all this like super inspirational meaningful stuff right. and I'm just, and I always just want to comment right. Everybody's just waiting to see your tits. Like nobody's scrolling through, going, "This is meaningful." Everybody's scrolling through, just being like, "Yeah, come on, where are your tits at?" Yeah, come on. She, if she was smart, she'd put that quote above her prolapsed asshole on that Instagram <laughs> play on that page. Her asshole is oh. perfect, and I won't let you besmirch it. Like that. <laughs> He's right. See, as well as other dudes besmirch it. That's funny. <laughs> The movie, I'm sorry, the, the girl who played Julia was smoking hot. Big ups to Eli Bush. Love the Safety Bro movies. This was a gem. P.S. Anyone ever tell you opals are bad luck unless it's your, birth, your birthstone? Is it true? It's true, actually. Both me and my mother have stories. Beware the opal. I've been tempted by Ivy before. Signed, an Asian guy. 
Well, if that, you oh, go ahead. That's made no, that's made up. The Asian guy. I'm I'm on to you now. I'm on to you. By the way, that the girl who did play Julia, her first film role ever. Yeah, it was her first feature yeah, film. I yeah, heard. Yeah. Well, if you expect this movie to be a regular Adam Sandler film full of slips and farts, then you will be disappointed. Otherwise, sit back and expect to be on edge of your seat for two hours. This is a master craft of filmmaking that highlights Sandler's skills as a dramatic actor. Kevin Garnett is surprisingly good. By the way, let me add something else that that I forgot. You said it. For two fucking hours. This was a two-hour and fucking 14-minute movie. I know because the first time I watched it, I I stopped at once, and it was like an hour and a half in, and, and I did the math. I'm like, there's another. That's two hours and 14 minutes. That's too fucking long. That's too long. The movie was pretty good overall, but the ending was horrible. I hate the ending. It seemed like an abrupt way to end the movie, either due to cost or time, but the ending was terrible. This guy could not win for nothing, but when he does, he also loses. So sad. The actors and actresses were actually amazing. This movie just seemed too cheap for them. It was worth $5.99 for me. I love when people post the cost of the movie. Oh, it's the best. Well, this I got guy couldn't win for nothing, but for five ninety nine, yeah. all right. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't the worst right. way to spend a Wednesday. Yeah, night. Just say for, it. Six, for six bucks, not for nothing. You're exactly right, <laughs> fucking Kevin. And now it's time for those people who have the same education level as Gina Bisconti, as I mean, a Salem County College education. The I'm Amazon sorry. One Star Reviews. Here we go. Do you enjoy Amazon watching the worst of human nature for two hours straight? Reviews. Do you love recognizing the movie that you watched for two hours actually had no redeeming value at all? If you answered yes, you will love this movie. Unfortunately, my answer is no. <laughs> the, under that, does it say people who did like this movie may also like Uncle Gino is Amazing, available on <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> The acting was good. So great to see actors accurately portraying some of the worst traits in human nature. Parentheses, heavy sarcasm. Signed, Mr. Optimism. Heavy sarcasm. (laughs) Worst movie I've ever seen. Nothing but yelling and people talking over each other the entire time. No real plot and nothing about actual gems. It's about a gambler who was always losing and yelling. Seriously disappointed (laughs) with the movie. Do your safe, do yourself a favor and save two bucks. Did this guy go back to 1985 to Blockbuster and pay for that price $2 to rent a movie? Or, yeah. did this, or did this penny pinching auteur rent it in SD instead of HD? Fuck. Remember SD? She used to run a club that was relevant. Me neither. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> He was disgusting. I was hoping the lone enforcers set the car on fire after they threw him in the trunk. This character and his wife deserved each other. I knew sleazebags like him in New York while growing up, and I avoided them as a teen because just they just became as a, what he was as an adult. Sandler, Sandler should stick to comedy, and the writer-producers of this ill-conceived Sandler movie- should start doing comedy, it should <laughs> say. <laughs> so true. Should find another line of work. I love when people say that successful filmmakers should find another line of work. Sure, Jim from accounting. I'm sure the Safety brothers will immediately <laughs> start in the truck driving school tomorrow based on your recommendation. Under that, did he put, I, I know because all my friends at fucking the work say I should do stand up. Did he put that in? <laughs> all my friends are saying I'm funny and I should do it. No, you shouldn't. If it were possible to file a lawsuit, not only to get reimbursed, but also rewarded for the pain and suffering, I would sue the makers of this movie. It was incredibly stressful to watch, but also a horrible story with horrible characters, except for Kevin Garnett. Gotta love the big man. Go Celtics. I'm not Jewish, but if I were, I would be incredibly insulted by all the negative stereotypes shown about Jewish people in this movie. Sucked, sucked, sucked. What were the negative? What were the negative? I'm not stereotypes? Jewish, but my accountant is. <laughs> <laughs> what were the negative stereotypes? Seriously, like I, I like he was a degenerate gambler. I didn't see that as Jewish. He was a jeweler. I get that, but it didn't really get. He was a shitty jeweler. He, it wasn't because he was a Jew. He was just mm-hmm. shitty at what he did. I mean, he he did he came across as like that stereotypical weak male, Bushy, yeah. money okay. like all consumed by money, like. It was it was like all the worst sides of what a Jew could be. But see, but the, and, and I, that if you look at it like that, without a doubt. But see, I looked at it like the like that's what all gamblers are like. You know what I mean? That's what the that's a degenerate gambler who happens to be a Jew. 
not a filthy Jew who, you know, is gambling. There's a difference. I get to show you one of each. What? That's Gino's screen name, by the way, <laughs> on AOL. A lot of underscores. The sound effects were awful. I don't understand why bringing back irritating synthesizer sounds from the 70s has become the thing to do in movies and TV shows. Just terrible. Can't believe that national reviewers recommended this New York-centric indie film about a Jewish sleazeball who is, in, who is an inveterate gambler, womanizer, and con man. Signed, Simon Wiesenthal. <laughs> it's an actual person. Thank you. This made my quarantine even more depressing. Now excuse me while I go back to filing for unemployment. <laughs> 600 bucks if i wanted to watch a show that included tons of nonsensical screaming i'll watch real housewives of new jersey was i the only american who didn't like this sorry adam i like most of your stuff except for overboard one of the worst movies ever made nonsense Wait, adam sandler was no. an overboard no. over no 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 <laughs> the, for the remake there, no movie. there was a movie called overboard that adam sandler was in it was his first movie and it what? was an atrocity. I never heard Overboard of is a great movie with Goldie no, Hawn. I refuse to watch the remake as different much movie. as I love Anna Faris. Yeah. Different movie. But he plays a, uh, Adam Sandler plays a guy who works on a cruise ship. And it's- Why do you know this? Because when Adam Sandler was big, I was like, let's see what else he's made. Right. And, we went out, and I rented it at, on a VHS. I went and rented it and it was fucking abysmal. Wow. Did the guy behind the counter go, hold on a second. <sighs> Here <Exactly>. you go. <laughs> Nonsensical screaming. Might I recommend don't see the Rocky Horror Picture Show, any horror film on opening night, or the movie The Room? Oof. Those are your views, kids. Kevin, uh, Kevin Israel, did Gino Bisconti gut the sacred cow? Just say <laughs> yes, you'll feel better. <laughs> I love Just, the deep boss. He doesn't want to give I, you any credit in the world. You don't I want know to, but face. the fact is there's not a single person here that wants to watch that movie ever again. There's not a single fucking person here that isn't annoyed by the fucking way it plays out, that isn't annoyed by the gambling, that isn't annoyed by everything other than the acting, which is the only thing that kept you from turning it off, saying, what the fuck is going on? You know what? I'm going to say something surprising here. I've yeah. known Gino for nearly 20 years. And I've apologized and, for this And in the time that I've known him, <laughs> He's never once done anything kind of redeemable. <laughs> Thank you. I can't, ima I can't remember one thing where I was like, you know what? I kind of want to be like him. <laughs> but tonight. Thank you. Mr. Bisconti, you have gone above and beyond the call of duty. And uh, because I agreed with you so much, I have to say that I do think you got this sacred gemmed cow. Woohoo! Goats? Oh, you, you I, don't even vote. He's the no, one no, that no, votes. No. Fuck yes, Kevin Israel, my man. Hey, listen, I agree. He, he did gut the sacred cow. And I'll even give you a compliment. Now, the, you are the, let me think this out, maybe third person I've ever knocked a point off of my score because of the argument. Thank you. So, Bill Schultz was the first one. Kevin, I, I, I'm blanking, and there's another guy. I said, I'll knock it down another point. I think it was recently, too. I've, I don't knock my scores down, but I knocked it down a point because of you. So your argument was, was very What well, did but. Schultz, what movie did Schultz do? I should know this. Schultz did two. He's our only return guest so far. He started, he did episode three. Which he Indiana has nothing Jones. else to do, let's yeah, be honest. <laughs> Except Did drink, he need a place to sleep? To drink <laughs> on a Murphy bed? Yeah. He did Indiana Jones, right? He did Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade, and then he went after uh, Independence Day. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. He and I went head to head on Independence David. Day. <laughs> I hate I hate Independence Day. I, I, I love that movie. So do I really I. do. So do I. I'm not saying it's it's one of those movies, right, Kev? Whenever it's on, you watch it. Always. And Every I did, time. Did you watch Resurgence? I have no desire terrible. to watch Resurgence. I saw that. I saw it. It was, it was as bad as it was as it was worse than anything you could imagine. I'm gonna watch it now because you did. It's but so bad. <laughs> but you never don't watch Independence Day. You don't. You don't. I flip right by it. I have no just look, Just looking forward to kicking E.T.'s ass, sir. Well, you'll have the chance. <laughs> oh, the cliches in this fucking so film. Good. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. I, I gave it a cold. What? Mm -hmm. yeah. That, yeah. There's nothing a better virus. than you. A virus taking down an entire armada. Yeah, that's then, it. Then you guys get in there and you do your stuff. You, you do your thing. You knock them out. You, you, you do your stuff. <laughs> oh. There's nothing better than goatee saying, Take him out. You'd all be dead if it weren't for my David. Take him out. Do you think? 
Oh, it's uh, so good. Gina Bisconti, where can we find you besides In Hot Water on Compound Media and probably on, a, uh, on the back of a milk cart when Alex Engelbert returns from Florida? I promise I won't fuck her this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that at least three times. I'm going to fuck her. She's hot. Um, GinaBisconti.com. <laughs> it takes you to all my stuff. Buy my album, Uncle Gina. It's amazing. But just keep fucking, you know, watching us on In Hot Water. We have a lot of fun. And we have you boys on. You have to come do it, Kev. Israel. Let's do it. Oh. Anytime you want. I'll be there. I'll have uh, Ari reach out to each of you, send you an email so you can Skype. Or just come in now. We had people. We had, we had guests come in twice the past week. Like, the world is sneaking back together. What time are you guys I'll, on now? Did you switch your time slot? Or are you still yeah, on? you don't have to get up early anymore. We're on from 2 to 3.30 now, oh, so it's awesome. Oh, done, done, and Life done. Life is good. Yeah, come yeah. on in. Both of you, come on in. We'll get you in there. <sighs> done and done. Anywhere else? Anything else you want to promote, plug? Shout no, out. It's Gina Bisconti, you are a gem, an uncut gem. I'm cut. A, a, you're a mensch, Gino. <laughs> From my people to yours. Hopefully you see in my face how much I fucking adore hanging out with you too. It's, it's been too fucking long. It so. has been too long. Gina Bisconti, we love you. In hot water, check it out. Thanks again for coming on Gutting the Sacred Cow. Guys, it's been a blast. We'll talk to you later. Take care.